Hey there, Lone Star College family. This is Megan Hopwood. Thanks for joining me today to talk about making posters in Canva. So we left off on Canva's homepage. So let's go ahead and just click on the default recommended poster. That's an 18 by 24. And we'll go ahead and load on into our blank canvas. So the first thing I want to point out before we start diving into the features is the Canva Pro icon. So it's a little three pronged crown and this is something you'll see throughout Canva. Canva is free, but a lot of their content is paid where you have to pay extra to access certain images, to access certain features. I am using the free version. I don't pay for Canva. There is a lot of really great free content, but just be cautious as you go through Canva. Make sure that if you are using the free version that the items you select are for free. You'll notice that there's a little crown when you hover over items that are free. They will say free in the bottom right corner. So where we start off are templates. I really like a lot of their templates and I've used several of them before. This one here, the career expo one, I have used to make posters advertising like end of the semester events for students. So they have a lot of pre-done posters, many of which are free. So look through those. If you see something you like, you can always stop and change the content. I've used this one with the light bulbs before. But if you want to start from just a blank slate, if you just click on the central image right here, you can change your entire background color. You can go from their pre-selected colors, or you can do a full hex code if you know what color you want your background. Or, and this is something that I feel like is really great, you can add a photo background. There are two places where you can do this. On this menu, there's a background, which will just automatically apply that to the background for you. You see some of these are free. And I'm sure if we kept scrolling, some of them would show up as a paid feature. But let's just look at a few for fun. Or you can go up to photos if you'd rather have a photo background. Now there are a lot of free photos that you can use, but also as you scroll, you'll end up finding some that are paid. A lot of the free content comes up first, which is very helpful. You can also, and before we add a different background, let's go ahead and look at this, add an uploaded photo. So if you have a photo that you took that's on your computer, if you go over to uploads, you can add an image here yourself. You can also add videos which we won't need for a still poster, but it's nice to know that we can do that. So let's go back to photos. I'm gonna go ahead and drag this one over here. And as you drag it over to the photo, it'll show you where it fits in the frame. So this one I want to apply to the whole background. And there it is. It is the start of spooky season. I'm recording this at the beginning of fall. So I think I'm gonna go with a Halloween theme today just because that makes me super happy. So we've added a background. We've used the photo and just dragged it on over to this space. Now, something else that you can do that I really like, and I'm going to jump over here to where it says elements. And this is a nice way to make a cool photo grid. If you would like, there's a section in here. There are a lot of different things that you can add in elements. You can add image icons, you can add lines, you can add shapes, all of which are really great. But what I wanted to focus on for the moment is grids. So grids lets you put a photo grid together. And I'm gonna go ahead and open this up in a larger section so we can see all of the different options. I like using the photo grids when I'm making a more academic poster where I want to feature my methods and my introduction and my research and I can kind of put those together in different sections. But let's say just for fun I want to do this one. I can go back over to photos and I'm going to go ahead and stick with my kind of spooky theme. And I can also add, if I want to click into that frame, you'll see it kind of highlights around the edge. I can go ahead and just pick a color. I just want that box to be straight black. I want that one to be kind of a, a gray. I want this one over here to be a different shade of gray. So that is also an option for creating a collage. You can fill all of these with images or you can just add a color. 
Now you'll notice when we click on these pictures, we get options up here at the top that change as we click on different pieces. So if this wasn't quite the shade we wanted, I can go to filter and I can change it to a more grayscale image. I can add drama, which adds more of a bluish hint to it. But all of these add some different color focuses to change the base image. And since I'm going for kind of a black, white, gray theme here, I'm going to go ahead and stick everything in a gray scale. I can go to adjust. If I knew more about photography and things, some of these would have more meaning to me, but you can just play with these sliders to kind of get the brightness that you want, the contrast that you want. If you wanted to add a color tint of some sort to it, you can do that here. I'm going to go ahead and set that back to kind of a neutral setting. I can crop my image down. So if I wanted this to focus on a different part of this picture, I can move that and I can see more of that here. I'm gonna keep it focused on this, this path. I like having that in this image. And I can flip this around either on the horizontal, facing the other direction. I can flip it vertical, which makes it look more like the upside down. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip that back. So spacing will add a little bit of space between your images. Because I have that tree picture set as the background, it's going to show through between those spaces. I'm going to just close that back up because I really like how that looks just all close together. And now I'm going to go ahead and go over to text. And I'm going to go ahead and add a text. But before I do this, I want to show you a couple different ways to do this. So with text, you can add headings, subheadings, body text that comes through in different sizes. I can also use some of their special fonts and specially put together text. Baked fresh, I like the colors there. It's nice and blocked. But I know if I scroll down here a little bit more, there's one that says boo. And it's got kind of the fun edges and I really like that. So I'm going to bring that all the way up here at the top. Now, if I wanted to, I can adjust this text. So if I want an extra O on my boo, I can do that. And why don't we just do that just for fun. But another way that you can add text is actually down here in more. And I'm going to go ahead and click on styles. So what I like about styles is it gives you a font, it gives you a heading and a subheading, and then a color palette. So if you select a palette, it is going to change what is happening on your screen. So my boo font, I'm going to go ahead and click this and then I'm going to go ahead and undo it. It changes that boo font to match the settings that I just made, but I don't want that right now. So I'm going to control Z undo. You can also undo up here at the very top, these forward and back buttons. And you can see it's automatically saving my changes as I go. So that's pretty great. So another thing that is going to be down under more is charts. And this is a fairly new feature, but it's one that I really like. You can select a chart type to add a chart into your poster which is really great, especially if you're asking students to use this to make some kind of presentation poster. Since the spooky will give all of my items a spooky theme, ghost and werewolves and vampires and zombies. And we'll go ahead and just delete this last one. Let's change up these numbers a little bit just for fun. There we go. At any point, I can also change the font color and let's put that in white so it fits. I'm going to shrink this chart down just a little bit so I know it fits on the screen. Another thing I really like is how the guidelines show up. So it'll show me when I have this, if I want it centered absolutely in the middle, it'll show me where those guidelines are. If I just want it centered through the top or centered under that boo, I can do that. I'm going to go ahead and center it with this entire poster. There we go. And I can, of course, customize the colors as well if I wanted to, but I'm not going to because I have pretty terrible color sense. So we have added background photos. We've changed the colors. We've changed the spacing. We have added text. 
We have gone through the styles. If we wanted to change the overall style, we have our chart here. So everything's looking pretty good. I like how this poster's come together. So let's go ahead and call this one done. Now that it's here, what can we do with it? So we can share it. Like we talked about in the introduction, we can share it to a team. So if I was making this as part of a group project, or if I was collaborating with the other librarians, I could then share it here and let them edit it or make comments, make changes. I can download it, which is probably what I would recommend doing. You can change the type of download that you have. For this one, since we have just still images, we really just need the PDF print copy, which you can use to print it off. Or, and this is new as well, if you wanted to print this as a poster, Canva will charge you to print it and send it to you if that is something you are interested in. So that is about it for poster making. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. And feel free to come explore with us as we look at making presentations and videos.